The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm DJ, and today we're going to take a common electronics project into an entirely new dimension. Let's get started. Amazing Hacks. Inspired Designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. If you've been following do-it-yourself projects for the last 10 years or more, you've probably seen plenty of these, infinity mirrors. They're really simple projects to make. You really just need a mirror, some two-way reflective film, and some LEDs to stick between them. And then you get this really cool sort of infinite portal effect. Now, most of the time they're two-dimensional. I said we'd be taking an electronics project to the next dimension. Well, I meant that literally. We're gonna be making an infinity polyhedron. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slow down there, Pythagoras. I haven't taken a geometry class in years. A poly what? Don't worry. I haven't taken a geometry class in years either. You don't need to know any advanced math to make this project work. And in case you've forgotten, a polyhedron is just a three-dimensional shape made up of polygons like triangles or rectangles. Now, if we really wanna make our project pop, we probably wanna choose a 3D shape that has lots of symmetry and has lots of similar faces so that it's easy to make. Well, it turns out there are polyhedra that exactly match those criteria, and they're called the platonic solids. You've got the four-sided tetrahedron, the six-sided hexahedron, also known as a cube, the eight-sided octahedron, the 12-sided dodecahedron, and the 20-sided icosahedron. So which of the platonic solids should we give the proverbial rose to? Well, I did a quick mock-up of a tetrahedron, and this is the easiest option, but I don't think four faces is good enough. So let's go with the hardest option, the icosahedron with 20 faces. Not only because that'll give us the most reflections, but because D20s are cool, and I think it would be awesome to have a gigantic infinity D20 hanging in my shop. Don't you? So now we need to decide how we're gonna light everything up. I could go with regular LEDs, but I've decided to go with RGB addressable LEDs. This will simplify the wiring and allow us to do more complex effects. And we're totally gonna to do that. So we do need to use a microcontroller to drive the pixels. And since we don't need a lot of GPIO, we can get away with this super teeny tiny five volt uh, trinket board. Now the pixels do require five volt logic, so this will work just fine. So we will, of course, need a power supply. And I'm gonna be lighting up the vertices of our shape, which means we need at least 12 LEDs times 60 milliamps, which means we need more than 720 milliamps. Now, this is a five volt, two amp supply, which is more than enough current. You never wanna have a power supply that's just barely enough current. Always have a safety factor of at least two. And since it's got a barrel plug, we also have a barrel plug adapter, and we can just wire this directly up to our string of LEDs. So before we get to actually connecting our LEDs together, we probably wanna know exactly how long the wires between them will be, which is why I've already gone ahead and 3D printed the structure that will make up our icosahedron. So in this case, I've gone ahead and made two components. We've got vertices and edge rods. The vertices have five connection points and the edge rods have little nubs that just press fit right in to the hinges of the vertices. All right, that looks good to go. And now we can accurately gauge where the wires are gonna go and so that they're just the right length and so that they look nice. And I've also gone ahead and made a 3D printed template that we'll use to trim the reflective film so that it mates up very nicely with our triangular faces. All right, so we're almost ready to get started soldering. I like to do everything in one straight shot, which means preparing everything in batches. 
First, I'm going to tin the backs of the LEDs, and I'm also going to cut and strip the 36 pieces of wire that I'm going to use to connect them. Now, it would be nice if I didn't have to do this all by hand, but unfortunately, we don't have the technology to automatically cut and strip so many pieces of wire. All right, so we're nearly done. I've got my do-it-yourself strand of RGB LEDs, and most importantly, they're soldered in the right direction. That's an easy mistake to make and something that I always uh, take a little extra time with. So I've gone ahead and added a resistor in line with the signal pin. It's recommended to have a 300 to 500 ohm resistor there. And I've added a splice connection for the five volt rail and we'll use that to connect to the barrel jack and the other connections will attach to our microcontroller and we've got one connection to one of the GPIO. So let's do that. All right, we're so close. We've got our mess of wires and before we attach our mess of wires to the frame of our shape, we should probably test it out in case we need to make any changes or the circuit doesn't work at all. All right, this took a lot longer to put together than I thought it would, but we're nearly done. So I just needed to affix the LEDs using some hot glue into the vertices. So let's do that. Now that our made for TV movie bomb is complete, let's go test it out in the dark. Simple, psychedelic, and effective. This wasn't a particularly complex build, but I accomplished what I set out to do, which was to take a regular infinity mirror and turn it into a three-dimensional polyhedral shape. And it looks pretty cool, so I think I'm gonna keep it in my shop. If I were doing this again, I would probably use mirrored acrylic for an easier assembly. And I'd probably use a different microcontroller so I could do some different effects. Have you ever made an infinity mirror? What would you do to put your own spin on it? Let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. We'll see you next time. <laughs>